Laura, and as you all know, I love naval history. For today's session, I chose to speak about Le Bicento, Eighty Guns' French flagship from the Battle of Trafalgar. Well, Bicento was launched in 1803 and commissioned a year later. She became a flagship of Admiral Latouchtevel, commander-in-chief of Toulon's fleet. At that time, Toulon's fleet was already entangled into Napoleon's plan of the invasion to Britain. But in the midst of preparations for this task, the only admiral who ever defeated Nelson, Admiral Latouchtevel, died in August of 1804. Le was his flagship just about eight months. Well, Latouchtevel was immediately replaced by Admiral Wilmer, who also hoisted his flag on Le Bicento. And the preparations for the invasion went on. But what was actually the plan for the invasion? Well, Britain was, and still is, an island. So Napoleon had to somehow transfer his invasion army over this border called English Channel. But the English Channel wasn't called English Channel for no reason. The British Channel fleet hadn't really allowed movements of another squadron there, so Napoleon needed a strong fleet to combat the British and protect his invasion flotilla. France had one of their main fleets in Brest, but that one was not that strong to deliver an overwhelming blow to the Channel fleet. Also, it was blockaded by British. Thus, Napoleon figured out that he needs to combine all his fleets in order to combat the British. And his plan was Toulon's fleet, Brest's fleet, and Rochefort's squadron will quickly sail to West Indies, meet there, and quickly sail back to the Channel, destroy the British, and secure the invasion. Also, the Toulon's fleet had to pick up the Spanish ships on the way. So, in front of Villeneuve and others, lied in Herculean task. They had to break through the British blockade without fighting, get favorable winds and don't need any British warships, meet the others in West Indies and sail back under the same circumstances. And how it actually went? Well, Toulon's fleet tried to break out from Toulon for the first time on January 18th, 1805, but then the storm came and Villeneuve retreated back. The second breakout of Toulon's fleet on 29th March was more successful and after combining with Spanish fleet, Villeneuve sailed to the West Indies. Obviously, the British Mediterranean fleet under the command of Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson chased him across the Atlantic. It might be of interest that the squadron from Rochefort successfully arrived to West Indies, waited there for a while, and at the time Villeneuve sailed to West Indies, the Rochefort squadron already sailed back. So, Villeneuve arrived to West Indies and found no one. He was supposed to wait there for 40 days and harass the British trade, but that hadn't happened. The only thing Franco-Spanish fleet done there was to capture a diamond rock, which was a rock, in front of Fort de France, fortified by British. Nelson's fleet arrived to West Indies on June 4th, and Villeneuve, immediately after hearing the news, sailed back. Obviously, Nelson chased them. Well, Villeneuve was now somewhere in the Atlantic, and nobody knew where. Napoleon thought that Villeneuve is sailing to Brest to rescue the French fleet there, but the combined fleet appeared on 22nd July off Cape Finisterre. Here, they fought with squadron of Admiral Calder, the British reinforcement blockading Ferro. The third battle of Cape Finisterre ended up indecisively, but the severe damage inflicted on combined fleet forced Villeneuve to retreat to Bay of Vigo in order to make immediate repairs. Then the Franco-Spanish fleet took refuge in Cadiz. Napoleon was furious, even when he already called off the invasion, and decided to replace Villeneuve in command of the combined fleet. Villeneuve knew that if replaced, he would have to face Napoleon's breath, and that was not a pleasant perspective. Thus, Villeneuve decided to clean his reputation by sailing out once more and fight the Nelson's Mediterranean fleet. So, on 21st October 1805, off Cape Trafalgar, a battle took place. We all know this engagement as the Battle of Trafalgar. Since La Bicentaure was a French flagship, 
she was placed somewhere in the middle of a Franco-Spanish line. That meant that HMS Victory, British flagship, broke the line behind her. Victory poured her full broadside into the stern of the center. That effectively put her out of battle for a long time. Other ships that followed Victory did the same thing and eventually Bicenta lowered her flag to HMS Conqueror of Captain Israel Pellew. A violent storm which followed the battle enabled the French crew of Bicenta to recapture their ship. Still, Le Bicenta sank on the 23rd of October 1805 as a result of that storm. Well, that's it for today. I know that we hadn't talked much about this particular ship, but I wanted to take this opportunity and try to explain the largest naval campaign during the Age of Sail, the Trafalgar campaign. Please tell me uh, in the comments if you'd like a video focusing solely on this campaign. I hope you enjoyed it and if you like this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. It'll help a lot. I hope to see you next time with a biography of another ship. Bye!